as though your mother had abandoned the both of you? Yes. In times like that, um, who was it that you turned to? Who was it that you that you got support from and comfort? Jackson Rollins. Tina. Are you a twin sibling? I always wondered what it feels like to be a twin. Someone that looks exactly like you, like a mirror. Someone that is your best friend or another soulmate. But what if you start to hate your mirrored image and you start being jealous and competitive with your own twin sibling? But would you be so angry that you would be willing to kill your own? This is a story about the evil versus the good twin. But is one really the good twin or not? This is one wild crazy case that was so publicized back in the 90s. Now I personally have a younger brother and I do remember having pretty bad fights when we were growing up. Me and my brother fought all the time about the computer, like who got to go on the computer first because we only had one computer growing up. Food and everything had to be like equal, right? But thank God because he's a guy and I'm a girl, like we didn't fight about like sharing clothes or makeup and things like that. Honestly, I'm glad that I have a brother because if I had a sister, girl, you know we would be having cat fights all day. Also, I've heard that if you're a twin or if you know anyone that has twins, apparently they are a bit more psychic towards each other. If one is sick, one knows that you're sick and they become sick as well. Or they think about the same thing and that, you know, this whole twin psychic thing is real. Talking about psychic and magical stuff, I recently watched Fantastic Beasts who is a big Harry Potter fan. Me, I love magic. I am also into magic in real life as well. And because I love magic, I'm also in the midst of reading Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. So this is a book all about herbs and like magic that you could do, like candles and rituals and things like that. So I think it is super interesting. Also, if you guys love the magical world and all that stuff like me, I highly recommend that you guys check out the magical game Switchcraft. You enter the spellbinding world of Switchcraft and experience a unique blend of TV worth writing. You choose your own adventures, play magical games, you get to do your own spell work in the games, and there's thousands of magical match three levels. I personally love the magical realms and the mystics, so thank you so much to Switchcraft for partnering up with me today. In this magic story, we're in the point of view of Bailey. She is a freshman at a top witchcraft academy, and her best friend Lydia is missing. We're getting to the bottom of what happened here by using magics, creating your own sigils, you just become the wizard or the which that you've always wanted to be. The graphics, the hand-painted visuals is stunning. And it just excites me to play this game every time because you know, I love magic in real life. And to see that come alive into a game is really exciting. You will really not regret playing this game. You'll also learn a lot about magic. I have a link down below so you guys could download the game and have fun in your wizarding world. This is the Han sisters. Sunny and Gina Han were born in South Korea on April 4th, 1974. They are identical twins and Sunny was born five minutes early and apparently in the twins world, especially in Asia, you know, it really does matter who was born first and second. I mean, it's a little bit outdated, but you know, in the Asian culture, like you have to have some kind of a hierarchy who's older, who's younger, and that way it just rather it comes to taking care of your family, you know, responsibility abilities, all of that really lays on the older person. I'm not really sure if this really applies to like the Western countries. I feel like it doesn't because I've never seen that. I don't have friends who are twins, so I don't know. Now it seems like Sunny and Gina's parents had a tough time and when they were only three years old, the parents got a divorce. Sunny ended up living with her mother and Gina lived with her father. Now they also had other siblings. They were a sibling of six. So they had four other siblings it was a really crowded family. The father ended up leaving and marrying someone else. So the mother was left to take care of the kids and she just could not keep up. The mother was a bar waitress and she ended up hopping from job to job to boyfriends to different places. And she ended up having a bad gambling addiction. The sisters actually remember like their parents not being home for even days at a time and they had to fend for themselves not having enough food in the fridge, having to take care of their other siblings. And they grew up with really irresponsible parents. It was said that since a very young age, their mother actually kind of preferred Sunny a little more. And it could have been because she was the firstborn. 
like many twins, their relatives also remember them having kind of like that twin psychic ability. When one would be sick, the other would know, and they would also sometimes get sick. And they were also identical twins as well, so it was as if they mirrored each other all the time. When they were 12 years old now, almost a teenager, their mother just really could not take care of them anymore and decided to move to America. They were in Seattle at first for one year and again the mother still having gambling addiction decided to call her relatives who was living in California to take care of their daughters. So still being in America now in Seattle, again, the mother not coming home and taking care of them. In a new country now, they were living in survival and scarcity mode all the time. And it seems like that was kind of like embedded in their physical bodies and minds, not having a stable life. I'm really not sure and there's not much information about what happened to their other siblings, if they were still in Korea or where they were. So eventually they moved to California to live with their relatives. It was there where it seems like they started a new life and they seemed to be adjusting really well. It was the first time that they felt like they had stability. But there was still a little bit of sibling rivalry, but you know, their new relatives tried to make them feel equal as possible. For example, in Christmas, you know, they wanted the exact equal gift so that one didn't get more expensive gift than the other. So the relatives say that they really tried to make them as equal and not fight all the time about who was better than the other. But according to Gina, she says that her mother, you know, who came to see them once in a while, still made her feel inferior over her five-minute older sister, Sunny. It was as if, you know, still their Asian Korean mother still saw Sunny as the superior one, the older one, the one who's going to take charge of the family. Both of them were actually super smart. They ended up being co-valedictorians, and, and being valedictorians in high school, you become like the highest academic achieving students. So according to their uncle, it seemed like they were kind of having a good rivalry between each other. So if one got an A, the other had to get an A+. Although they were twins and were very similar and both were smart, they had very different personalities and goals in life. It was said that Sunny was kind of like her name, Sunny. She was bright, she was popular, she had a lot of friends, and it seemed like she was the prettier one compared to her sibling. While according to their relatives, for Gina, she was smart too, but it seems like she had to study extra harder than Sunny. Like things didn't really seem to come as easy for her as her sister did. She was a bit more shy, not as talkative, not as bright, and was described as more serious. Sunny was also the one who got to do things first. She had a first boyfriend, the first part-time job. Being, again, family, they fought a lot. But at once, their fight got really bad, and that was when they were 15 years old. Reportedly, Sunny got a pen or something sharp and stabbed Gina, and their fight got very violent. They say that there was always the I'm older, I'm more superior kind of dominance or competition between the two. And from the stories that we hear, it seems like Sunny always got the last end when it came to the fights. It seemed like the family was happy, but Sunny does later say that when she was in the last year of her high school, she got kicked out from her aunt. I guess her aunt and her uncle did not have a great relationship with their mothers, and her aunt would tell the twins to not contact their mother, rather it was because of the gambling addiction or because they just had like... I guess them within themselves, the aunt and their mother had sibling fights themselves. And one time the aunt found out that Sunny was writing letters to her mother and she got really mad because she didn't want her to contact her own mother, which of course doesn't make sense, but Sunny says that her aunt also had mental problems herself and that she would drink a lot and, and that she prohibited them from talking to their own mother. Sunny was kicked out at around 17 and she lived with her neighbors for one year until she graduated. So again, it seems like they really grew up from that sibling like always fighting with the families and not having a stable home. Eventually, they graduated again with good grades and it seemed like their future was really bright. Sunny decided to go to a university earning a full scholarship while Gina decided school wasn't for her and went to the US Air Force. 
In university, it seems like Sunny was doing really well, but soon she started to get into the wrong crowd. She would be focusing on partying, friends, and boyfriends rather than studying, and quickly her grades started to fall. She started to also love expensive things, designer goods, things that she never really had growing up. And eventually, her grade was so low that the scholarship was dropped, and she eventually just quit school overall and decided to just work part-time as a receptionist. Gina as well, just one month in into the Air Force, she just did not like it. She hated the training and she just wanted to get out ASAP. So it was reported that she lied saying that, you know, her father was sick trying to get out. I guess like in the US Air Force, the military, you can't really get out once you volunteer. The first excuse didn't work. So she eventually thought of just calling herself a lesbian and eventually she was released from the military. One of Gina's friend who helped her out get out of the military says, quote, they seemed to lack plain practical senses. They didn't seem to know how to cope with things, as if they didn't really know how to handle with difficult decisions in life. Although they were really smart and academically, like in real life, as reality hit them, they just could not, they just didn't know how to handle problems in life. They just wanted to get out quickly as possible. After she was released, she started to work at a casino as a blackjack dealer. And unfortunately, like her mother, she started to get into gambling addiction herself. She would be so upset with losing that she'd pull out more money in frustration and anger and lose all of that as well and just became a cycle. She got into so much debt that she couldn't handle that now she started to steal from her own friends and family. The family that gave them a second chance, her uncle and her aunt. In total, she stole about $40,000 forging checks and stealing credit cards. At one point, being so low in her life, she even attempted self-harm. Thank God she did survive. But after being caught with forging checks and stealing credit cards, she was arrested and she served 10 days in jail with three years of probation. It seemed like Gina developed or had a compulsive personality. Like if she was angry, she would just do something right away, destructive or not, she didn't care. People say that she had a very manipulative behavior, lying to get things her own way. At only in the early 20s, around 22 years old to be exact, Sunny knew that her sister was in a hard situation. Gina, you know, just came out of prison and on probation, like she had nowhere to go. So she called up her sister, asking and Sunny if they could live together and Sunny agreed. By this point, the twins haven't really been in contact ever since they graduated. They only talked once or twice a year and they were just busy living their own lives. When Gina finally met her twin sister in a long time, in her eyes, Sunny was living a total opposite life of her. Sunny loved designer and luxury items. She lived in a nice apartment, in a nice area, and drove a nice car, BMW to be exact. I mean, Gina herself was in thousands of dollars of debt due to gambling. And again, even now as an adult, she felt inferior to Sunny. But actually, Sunny wasn't all that innocent either. Although on the outside, she looked like she was making good money, living in an expensive place with a good car and everything. She was actually in debt herself and running into trouble with the law as well. Because she herself, Sunny, was addicted to living this lavish lifestyle that she could not afford, she ended up stealing credit cards from her friends to afford to live that lifestyle. She was using the money she did not have and apparently like she felt so comparable herself to her other lavish friends who came from a good family or was earning a lot of money themselves. I mean, it's so weird how they've been separated since they graduated, yet kind of living again the similar lifestyle, lying and stealing and just not being able to go through and be okay with problems in life. Once Gina moved in, their relationship went downhill and their sibling fights just got violent. And I'm guessing obviously two siblings, even if they're adults living in one apartment, they're gonna fight. They started fighting about who was borrowing whose stuff, clothes, makeup, who gets to use the bathroom first, leaving mess behind, you know, not doing the dishes. 
At one point, Gina stole Sunny's BMW car and ran off with it for a couple of days. When she came back, Sunny was angry. And the neighbors also remember calling police on them multiple times and that's just how much fights they got into. And this time, Sunny threw a phone in Gina's face and her nose broke and started to bleed everywhere. The police were called and this time, Sunny was not arrested for hitting her sister. It was actually that she had a warrant out because her friend called police on her for stealing her credit card and going on this lavish shopping spree, buying lingerie, clothes, designer shoes, jeans, and things like that. And finally, Sunny was caught. Funny thing is, when she was caught, she told the police, I didn't think my friends would mind. She was rich. She was charged and sentenced to probation as well. It seemed like both of the twins did not show much remorse or empathy towards what they did. And they, if you see their videos of how kind of they acted, especially Sunny, she really had that so what kind of attitude like, I don't really care. Gina was now also angry that Sunny broke her nose and now that Sunny wasn't there, it felt like she was able to step inside her sister's shoes using her car, using her identity, using her credit cards and her money to go more gambling and shopping herself. And because they were twins, she had no problems using Sunny's ID. Now eventually, Gina started racking up thousands of dollars under Sunny's name. When Sunny got out of jail, she found out and she got so angry at Gina. I mean, think about it. Your sister now is recklessly using your car, your apartment, your credit cards, and you have thousands of dollars under your account now. I would be angry too. And this time, Sunny would not forgive her sister. She would press charges against Gina and she was convicted of a felony and sentenced up to six months in jail in order to pay $10,000. Not only that, but Gina's ex-boyfriend also called the police on her because she stole his checks and started to forge the checks under his name. I mean, it was giving me a headache while just reading about this because this is non-stop revenge at each other. I mean, the girls were just blaming each other and going in circles, stealing from one another to justify their life being so miserable, just, just pointing the finger at each other. The last straw was when Gina was in jail and she called her sister. And according to Sunny, Gina was being really nice. Like they kind of wanted to, like Gina just wanted to kind of, I don't know, start all over again, or just kind of forgive each other. But Gina was being nice, asking her how she was doing, you know, and that she really needed her stuff. She just wants to get her belongings from Sunny's apartment. But Sunny admits that she was just so angry with her sister. She was having problems with the boyfriend she just woke up and she was not in a good mood. She yelled at Gina over the phone saying that she will not be getting her belongings, to never call her again, and that she will not be allowed back inside her apartment and she needs to take care of herself or on her own. She felt as if her only family member now was abandoning her and she had nobody. Gina would tell her inmates and other people carelessly that she hated her sister so much that she wanted to kill her. Now later, according to the defense, they claimed that, you know, this was more like, oh, hey, my sister, I wanna kill her. Like, you know, just some things that you say that you don't mean. Like, inmates recall that Gina was obsessed about talking about her sister, obsessed with hating her sister. And it was the anger to the point where she just could not hold it anymore. Gina was on work furlough, allowing her to leave prison for a certain amount of time. And this is when Gina started to tell other people of how much that she wanted to get rid of her sister. Eventually, while asking around, she found these two teenagers, Yoshi, who was just 15 years old, and Archie Bryant, 16. Now, it seems like they were also pretty good kids who grew up from a rough home. And Gina just took the opportunity to swoop these kids and implant in their mind that they would be getting some extra cash if they would be willing to help her. Now to these teenagers, Gina was that kind of like that cool older girl, like the bad girl just from prison. And I guess her manipulation tactics worked and something clicked about these three. And the agreement was that if they helped her to get her belongings from her sister's apartment, that they each would get a hundred dollars. This is a questionable part, apparently, according to them. You know, there was really no 
solid plan saying like i want to murder my sister like like this a b c d is going to happen it's not like they were planning for days or anything like she was subtly implanting these things into their minds the teenagers thought that all they were gonna do was just scare sunny and get her belongings but while they were driving to sunny's apartment gina would ask them have you ever hurt someone before you know there's a lot of like asian gangs in this area that's why i need you to that's why i need a gun for have you ever wanted to kill someone before these two teenagers boys said absolutely not that's that's not what i want to do and gina instructed the plans to just tie anyone up that would be in the apartment because sunny lived with roommates and leave sunny there because i am going to be the one killing her so it seems like from how the planning happened and from the trials and the defense like all they were trying to do as kids in their 15 year old mind was to just scare someone and whatever happens after is up to gina not up to them so they just wanted their money and go while on the way to the apartment all three of them bought large garbage bags duct tapes gloves cleaners and other supplies that was going to be used for their plan including a gun on November 16th, 1996, they drove to Sunny's apartment where she was living with her two other roommates. At first, Archie pretended to be selling magazines, knocked on the doors, and one of her roommates answered. But she didn't want the magazines and she shut the door. They were super nervous, they didn't know what to do, and Gina instructed them to go back. This time, be serious. The two boys with their guns this time knocked on the door again to have her other roommate, Helen Kim, answer the door. Archie barged into the apartment as her roommate screamed. They duct taped her and tied her hands. During this time, Sunny was in the bathroom and when she heard her roommate scream, she grabbed her phone and locked herself in her bathroom. She was able to call the police and while on the phone, Archie was able to enter her bathroom, again tying and duct taping her mouth. She was at gunpoint and Archie would threaten her that if she screamed or did anything that she would be killed. The girls thought that this was just a bad robbery and told them that they could take anything that they wanted. This is when Archie yelled to Yoshi saying, ready, call Gina. Of course, what would you think if this was you? Wait, like Gina, my sister, she's supposed to be in jail. Like what the hell is going on? Now, thankfully police was nearby and they were able to come to her home in just two minutes. When Archie heard the police coming, he freaked out and started to like, untie and loosen the tape from the girls then he told them tell the police that it was all a big joke gina and yoshi um, were freaking out as well and they didn't know what to do so they just decided to pretend like they were civilians like oh my god my sister what happened i just came like what's going on gina and yoshi in their car still waiting were actually talking to the police like my sister's in there i don't know what to do she left archie to be arrested and her and yoshi drove away and decided to actually run away the rental car that they were in they knew that they could be in trouble so they tried to buy a car that did not work and they went back to the rental car shop in order to switch the car by then gina was already wanted and they knew that she would be possibly using sunny's id the rental car department called the police and yoshi and gina were arrested surprisingly she tried to stick to her story that she was sunny and that she was not gina but of course this did not work for long archie argued that all this plan came from gina and that gina really told them that she wanted to finish her sister off and the evidence against them were very strong they already had receipts inside their car and belongings of garbage bags you know cleaning supplies like they were ready to execute this Surprisingly, Gina contacted Sunny in jail and told her that this was all a misunderstanding. The cops were manipulating Sunny into thinking that, you know, she had this whole plan to murder her. And actually, Sunny did believe her sister. Sunny was in denial that Gina would actually, her own sister would want to kill her. Gina claims that she was only trying to scare her sister Sunny because she would not give her belongings back. The defense also claimed that the last time the twins met, you know, it went really bad, it went violent, Gina broke her nose, and that's why she used the two boys in order to defend herself. This story became so big in the media, and the media started portraying them as a good versus evil sister. That one was kind of that well-dressed, prettier, the good sister. She was shown in suits, you know, her hair was straight, it seems like she got things together, and her evil sister was the criminal. The one that was addicted to gambling, jealous of her sister. Surprisingly, actually, Sunny um, was kind of 
neutral and siding with her sister as well. She even asked for leniency towards the judge saying that, you know, she didn't want her sister to really get into big trouble. Sunny did get a little bit of backlash and there's a lot of opinions about this. Let me know what you guys think. But Sunny was accused of trying to profit off of this story. She even hired a publicist or a manager that was taking care of, you know, the interviews. And at one point she was paid $10,000 to do a TV interview. There was also in talks of selling the rights to her story for about like a couple hundred thousands of dollars. You know, the story being made into a movie, but that never really went through. But I guess it wasn't really a good look for Sunny because it seemed like it's such a horrible thing that happened in your life and now you're trying to become famous off of it. So it seemed like Sunny was doing this out of attention. But some people think this is pretty savage for it. There's a video clip of her kind of acting like, yeah, so what? Like, if people are offering money, like, why not? Rather get paid or not, like, this thing happened, it's reality, so wouldn't you rather get paid for it? This kind of does show you the thought process and, you know, how they really don't live with the thought of consequences. On the third day of the trial, Sunny seemed disoriented. She slurred her words and didn't even have any makeup on. She was not fit for testimony and it was found out that due to a lot of stress, she also tried to take her own life, but she was okay. Yes. And you were there for her when she needed you? Yes. Gina was confident that she would not be put into jail for a long time and that she was able to convince the judges because her own sister, her mother, her family actually testified saying that they don't think that Gina would have done this, that she was just doing something out of anger and that she would not have actually carried out a murder and that nobody got hurt. But at the end of the day, the judges saw the actual planning, the receipts of them buying garbage bags and all these necessary supplies to actually carry out a murder and eventually sentenced Sheena to 25 years in prison. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find it to be true that the defendant, Jean Young Han, a principal, Archie was sentenced 16 years and Yoshi eight years. Crazy how these 15, 16 year olds, you know, partially manipulated by this older person, all for a hundred dollars. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think Gina really was just trying to scare her sister or did she really plan this? Later throughout the years, Gina confessed, quote, at one point, absolutely, I wanted to kill my sister. I hated her. The more I thought about my sister turning into my mom, I felt badly betrayed by Sunny. And with my growing rage, I wanted my sister dead. Gina was later diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and antisocial. In prison, Gina got an associate degree on social and behavior science saying, quote, I'm interested in anything to do with behavior and social pattern because I recognize my old behaviors and how it ties into my personality at the time and the person I was before I committed my crime. After the trial, Sunny kind of disappeared from the light and no one really knows what happened to her except the fact that she did get arrested a couple times for different crimes. In a recent interview, Gina said, I felt a lot of guilt and shame for my sister's life because I know she's been struggling. Not being able to be there for her and the trauma of my actions my sister had to endure. I know it was really hard for her. I was feeling very, very guilty and shameful for what I've done to my sister. In 2018, 20 years later, at 44 years old, Gina was granted parole, although the district attorney called her, quote, still manipulative and dangerous individual. It was recorded that in prison, Gina got a lot of pen pal mails from uh, different people around the world who was attracted to her. And there was one man that even gave her $100,000 after she kept in contact for up to a year. Once Gina was released, she has been in touch with her mother where her mother still deals with gambling addiction. Archie was released from prison after serving only 10 years and Yoshi who served only four. The most recent update about Sunny in 2020 when she was 45 years old, she was again arrested for another crime and nobody keeps in touch with her. And in a recent interview with the Medium magazine, the mother of the twin said that she does not keep in contact with Sunny and that quote, she thinks Sunny is dead. 
Not sure if this was a dramatic end to the interview or if this was real. Like, she really thinks Sunny is dead, but you know, unfortunately, the family don't keep in contact with each other anymore. They could have been the best siblings, the best supporters, and now, you know, as adults, they don't even keep in contact with each other and they don't even know what each other are doing. That maybe they really were meant to be just separated without each other in order to be complete whole. Personally, don't think I could have done it. I like being my own individual, being compared to someone else since you're young. I think that would really damage mental health since you were young and, and the mother just having a gambling addiction, not taking care of their own family, not having a stable home. I think that really affected twins growing up. So I can't say it's 100% their fault. Thank you so much for watching and let me know what you guys have thought about the story and remember to check out Switchcraft, going to the wizarding world and see you guys in my next video.